We have made it to the peak that was the most demanding hike I've ever done by far. But it's also the tallest peak, so 3,000 meters, whoop whoop, complete. Just waiting for the rest of the team to come take a group shot. And we're gonna go back because we're a tiny bit behind schedule. Hey up peeps, my name is Ilya and welcome to the vlog. We just came back from a three day hiking tour to Musala. That is the highest peak of the Balkan Peninsula at 2,925 meters, which is like 9,500 feet above sea level. That was a big hike. It's located in Bulgaria. The worst part about it is that the drivers and the guides had the worst brunt of it because in three days you have to drive for 10 hours you have to hike for 10 hours and drive back for 10 hours all inside a 72 hour period it is no small task lucky this time i did not drive and guide i just guided and took pictures and made a vlog so our drive was pretty unadventurous 10 hours of driving through serbia mostly highways things like that couple stops for coffee border crossings all without particular fuss and we were there in the evening of the first day just chilling and you know getting ready for the next morning. The accommodation we stayed at was in a little mountain town surrounded with beautiful trees and mountains and the sunset was gorgeous. First thing in the morning we lined up at the ski lift waiting to get our ski passes. Wait, not our ski passes, I mean our cable car passes because the cable car takes you to about 2,300 meters only leaving you 600 meters to climb so it's not that big of a deal to hike that but considering all the snow that's what made it complicated. Coming to the cable car place I was pretty surprised that there kind of like the really old style of cable cars are better there pre-soviet union but considering the thousands and millions of people who frequent that place in the winter season it's probably trustworthy and then you get inside and it's all squeaky and then you like feel the wind coming through the cracks in the doors and you're like okay i hope i survive this but all in all it was a great ride really great view of the mountains around so we got out at 2600 meters and we started walking through the snow perfect day sunny blue skies everything you could ever hope for we just got off the cable cart which was very wobbly and old to say the least we got off at 2300 meters or so which leaves us 600 meters to climb to the peak at roughly 3000 um, going good super steady day Super white snow, it's warm, should have brought my bikini suit. So far so good. And then we started falling in. So pretty much this whole mountainside is covered in these little shrubs and the snow covered it. So it looks like a beautiful snowy surface and then you start walking on it and then you pass two meters and you fall inside like half a meter. You pass another two meters and you fall up down into your waist and that keeps happening and you realize like, this is not going to be as easy as it looks despite the distance or the height or anything it's going to be way harder with all this falling in so we decided to make a detour instead of going straight down the path that you usually take through these shrubs since you can't see it in the winter we decided to go down to the ski path which means we had to lose a little bit of altitude but without falling in we made it faster the snow is super fresh super powdery falling in like crazy uh, so we made it out on the ski path right here. It's easier to walk on, easier to get down the hill, and then potentially track one of the ski paths up to the mountain home, which is between those hills up there, which is roughly half of our journey. It's not so long, it's not so steep. It's just an awful lot of snow up here, and lots of sunshine. Take off your shades, and you die from the brightness. Luckily, after we passed the ski path, we got onto a path where lots of other mountaineers and tour skiers go on so there was a nice clear path in the snow that was already kind of trampled down on so it wasn't falling through and walking past the halfway point and into the higher parts of the mountains was a lot easier we're almost halfway there lengthwise we got out onto this main path where all the other groups are walking so it's a lot easier to walk um, but height wise altitude wise we haven't made it so far we're almost at the same level where we started only once we get to the house up there will we start climbing vertically so that's gonna be the bigger challenge I think the weather's perfect it's just a tad bit cloudy enough to be sunny and warm but it's not like burning you alive now I haven't been to this place before but I have studied the maps extensively so these houses behind me mountain cottages officially mark the halfway point which means the hike officially begins here and this is not even the mountain we're climbing 
is that peak up over yonder. Uh huh. Two beautiful lakes on either side. I can imagine they're very beautiful, but at this time of year, it just looks like a white field. And then once you get up a little bit closer to this mountain cottage called Everest, it's like a pyramid. There's another huge lake called the Frozen Lake, but we didn't get to see that either aside from a field of white snow. But I guess in the summer, it would probably look amazing. Now at a certain point, our group split into two. And as I was the last guy sweeping everybody up, um, at one point I had to switch from the last group to the front group so I had to change my pace up really fast that got me pretty tired especially since that happened on a really steep hill like 40 degrees so the first group is here and I'm leaving the second group here and running up the 40 degrees to catch up with the first group and the first group are the athletic and kind of energy full people so that part was like <gasps> currently we're going up a particularly steep slope people above people below still a ways to go <sighs> If I don't get into shape after this, I, I don't know what will get me into shape. And that right there is the peak. We're getting close. We're getting tired. I'm good. A bunch of other teams trying to climb up, see them in the distance. Gonna be a challenge. And then we got to Everest. We had a small break. We're having a short break, about 200 meters before the peak. This is the last stretch, big break here. Um, we need our crampons and our harnesses, things like that to get to the top. It's a little bit more complicated. Behind me is the frozen lake because it's frozen. That's why they call it, I guess. And this pyramid here is called Everest because believe it or not, it was planned for Everest, but that didn't happen. So it ended up in Bulgaria instead on the highest peak of the Balkans. But before you get the montage of us getting to the peak, and the peak itself, like this video if you think it's cool, because it had lots of effort put into the filming of it. And subscribe to my channel, because there's lots of videos like this all the time. And we started hiking up the last bit of the trail. Now I don't have so much footage from that bit because I was put in the front of the column to lead the column. So I was focusing a lot on the path that I was choosing and making sure everyone was putting their harnesses and clamps on, uh, carabiners on properly because that place is slippery. There's tons of rocks. We're using our crampons. You have to attach yourself to the rope. So it requires a lot of concentration individually, but also if you're watching a group. No footage of that part, but it only lasted for about 20 minutes to half an hour while we got up to the top and obviously the view was breathtaking, but after mountaineering for quite a while, the views kind of get similar after two to two and a half thousand meters. It's pretty much rocky surfaces, a little bit of grass and snow, depending on what time of the year it is. For me as a mountaineer this year, I think I fulfilled my ambitions. I reached 3000 meters. I've been to a country I've not been to before. Overall, really satisfied, really happy, and it's a really good warm up for the rest of the tours I have this year. I have about 15 plans. Some of them are professional, some of them are recreational creational but it's gonna be a year full of mountains the only thing is it is freaking windy and as soon as you stop walking it gets really cold so lesson is don't stop walking next day we also stopped by the capital of sofia a kind of mixed cultural place in some ways it reminds me of ukraine in some ways it's a little bit closer to this southern slav part an interesting mixture once you see enough cities in a certain area they all start looking the same so honestly it wasn't like wow it was like hmm, great i've been here you know tick off the list but all in all the trip was wonderful beautiful i loved it can't wait for a next trip resembling this one though it might not be this year but obviously stay tuned for those thank you guys for watching this video hang out with me um if you're a mountain climber go climb you'll hit those heights eventually and then you know go on to higher ones that's just the way it works thank you guys so much for watching i'm going to see you guys in the next video nobody knows when that's going to be neither do i like the last one took me two weeks to make and then this one is pretty soon after the next one yeah, now I have to clean up all this winter stuff I pulled out specifically for this video.